Hello coders and thanks for joining us for another C Sharp Fundamentals tutorial. Today I'm going to be telling you guys about recursion. What I want you guys to take away from this tutorial in short is that recursion occurs whenever a method repeats itself or whenever a method is called within itself. Okay, so I'm going to do a classic example here to show you guys how recursion works and that classic example is a factorial. Now I'm sure you guys all know what a factorial is uh, but just in case some of you guys don't, what it is is let's say we want to get the value of the factorial of 10. And so what that is going to be is 10 times, I'll do an, an easier one, factorial 5. So factorial 5 equals 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay. Actually, we could technically just go down to 2 because anything times 1 is itself, but technically it's times one. Okay, so that's the factorial of five. Factorial of 10 is 10 times nine times eight times seven times six. Okay, so what we're gonna do is create a recursive method that solves factorials for us. Okay, so we're gonna start off by defining the scope of our method with private, static. Uh, our return type is going to be an integer because we are, we're never gonna get a float from this factorial. Um, and let's see, the name of it can just be factorial. And we're going to be passing it a factorial num. All right. Now then, we're getting a little red squiggly here because we told it that we want to return something, but we aren't returning anything yet. Uh, so that's fine. We will. So one thing that's common across all recursive methods is that there is always a um, there's always an exit condition. So. At the beginning of each of our recursive methods, it's good practice to have our exit condition. What's the exit condition? Well, if we call factorial right here within the method, something like this, okay? If we do something like this, then it's just gonna keep calling itself factorial num minus one. It's gonna keep calling itself, gonna keep calling itself until finally we get a stack overflow exception. So what we want to do is stop whenever factorial num is equal to something, okay? And if you look up here at this example, you can see that we want to stop at one, okay? So our exit condition is going to be if factorial num is equal to one, we just want to return one. That's all we want to return, okay? And then we have one more line of code here, and this is going to be like the, the beef of this, this method. This is like the really important part, and it's a little bit difficult to explain. But what we're going to do is I'm going to write this line, and then we're going to run it to be sure it works, and then I'm going to explain what it does. Okay, so what we're going to do is say return factorial num times factorial. So we're going to call the method factorial num minus 1, and we're going to pass factorial num minus 1. Okay, so let's run this to make sure it works. What I'm going to do is come up to static void main, create an it's called answer, set it equal to 0. So I'm going to initialize it first, and then I'm going to say answer equals factorial and we're gonna do five let's do something we can calculate really quick um, okay so five times four is 20 times three is 60 times two is 120 so factorial five should give us 120 we're gonna say console dot right line um, answer is answer okay so let's run this to see if we get 120 and there we go we get 120 and uh, so that proves that it works. Okay, so let me explain why this works because it can be pretty difficult to envision at first, but once you get it, it's a piece of cake. Okay, so what we're saying is, let's ignore this exit condition for now. We're gonna pass factorial num as five. Okay, so five is gonna come in and we're gonna return five times something, okay? What we're gonna say is five times, five times factorial uh, four, right? Because it's factorial num minus one. Okay, so this is the first iteration. On the second iteration, okay. Well, first we want to see what it, what factorial four is equal to. Okay, so here factorial five is equal to this. Come down, factorial four is equal to four times factorial three. Are you guys seeing that? So if we put factorial four in, if we put four in, then we're gonna get four times factorial four minus one, which is three. So keep going down here, factorial three is equal to three times factorial 
2. And then factorial 2 is equal to, um, it's equal to 2 times factorial 1. Okay. And as you can see with our exit condition, factorial of 1 is always going to return 1. So factorial of 1 equals 1. And this lays out exactly what the logic is trying to do whenever we run this method. Okay, so 5 times factorial of 4. Okay, what is factorial of 4? Well, factorial of 4 is 4 times factorial of 3. And you can see that all we're really doing is multiplying 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And that's exactly how this works. Okay, so I hope that sums it up uh, pretty well for you guys. That's about the best I could possibly explain it uh, because that is exactly what's happening. Okay, let's try to do another example, all right? Let's not print out this, or let's just change our answer in, in total. Let's create a new recursive method. Let's see, what can we do? Uh, we could probably do the power of. We could do um, a power of method where we pass it to two numbers. One is going to be the number we want to multiply, and the second number is going to be what power that number is going to be multiplied by. So if we pass this method 2 and 2, it's going to be 2 squared is what we're trying to get, which would be 4. So let's start by saying private static. We want this to return a float because we could conceivably pass floats to it with a certain power. Um, we're going to call this power. I guess we could just call it power. And our first parameter is just going to be float num. Our second parameter is going to have to be an integer. Um, we'll say power of is the name of that. Okay. And don't forget we have to have an exit condition. Our exit condition is going to be pretty similar to our factorial. Um, actually, let's not do the exit condition yet because that one might be a little bit tricky. Uh, let's see. Let's say... What we want to return here is going to be num times power, and we want to pass num. Because remember, we don't want to say num minus 1, because here we want to multiply num by itself a certain amount of times. Okay, and then what we're going to say is power of minus 1. Okay, because when we pass this again, we only want to multiply it one less time than we did originally or previously. Okay. So now all we need to do is have our exit condition. So this one, like I said, is a little bit tricky at first. Um, so what we want to say is whenever our power of gets to 1, we're done multiplying the number by itself, right? So let's say power of equals 1. If it's equal to 1, we want to return something. And it's not going to be 1. Okay, this is not going to work. And I'll prove it in case you're skeptical of that. So let's say answer equals power, and we'll do an easy one, 2, 2. So this should, uh, this should return 4. OK, so let's run this to see what we get. Uh, let's see, can I implicitly convert float to int? Okay, I forgot to change int answer to float answer because our method is returning a float. Okay, so let's see, we get, we get 2. Okay, so 2 squared is not equal to 2. Okay, so that proves that it doesn't work. So this is the trick, this is the holdup right here. Uh, power of equals 1, this is not what we want to return. Instead, what we want to return is num. Okay, and the reason is, you know, if, if power of is equal to 1 and we're saying num times that, then all we're going to get is num times 1, okay? Instead, what we want to, we always want to multiply num times num. We never want to multiply num times 1, okay? And essentially what power is, is it's just returning a number. So if, if we said return 1 here, then at some point, num is going to be multiplied by 1. And again, when we're talking about this power method, we only want to multiply num by itself. Okay, so that's the reason. So let's go ahead and run this to make sure we get four. <clears throat> and we do. So let's try some other numbers here. Let's say two, so four. Let's see. So two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is sixteen. That's right. Let's try let's try three to the power of three. This should be twenty-seven. Oops. Okay, and we get twenty-seven. 
Okay, so this power of method is working. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for the recursion tutorial. Uh, this should have given you a clear understanding of how recursion works. Simply, um, it is, in summary, recursion is just a method that calls itself within itself and it has an exit condition so it can exit out of the, um, uh, the recursion eventually. Okay, so that's going to define our recursion. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our channel. If you want to be updated on future videos related to game development and web development, definitely subscribe because that's going to be our major focus for this channel. All right, as always, guys, this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial. Thanks for watching.